When Riot started testing the new items on PvE, the first thing everyone did was rush in there and test how the new items affect gameplay. Not me. I instead looked towards the names of the items and the descriptions, because it was confirmed that after the shop revamp, all the items should be based on places in Runeterra. In other words, all the items should be canon. And that's what I want to have a look at in this video. We will go to PBE and we will have a look at the icons and the names of the new items. Because even though most of the items are not even complete yet, we can already read quite a lot of new lore from them. However, before we get into a game, I quickly need to mention that yes, half of the items are indeed incomplete. In fact, right now in the files some items have two versions. One version which can be found in normal games, and the other version which for some reason you can find in the tutorials. And right now it is not clear which version of the item is the latest version. So just to make it easier on all of us, I will go through all of them. And because there is quite a lot of items, let's get into a custom game. Now even though we are in a custom game, it is technically still a normal game. So I would get flagged as AFK and then kicked, so I need to get into a lane. Which is gonna be great because I'm already going without a script. Anyway, let's begin. First of all, we have BF Sword. Now, BF Sword always stood for Battle Fury Sword. Which sounds Noxian, but according to the art, it is obviously Demacian. Then there is Needlessly Large Rod, an item which we still have no idea where it's from. It seems to be picturing some kind of serpent, which makes me think that perhaps this is linked to Baron. Perhaps that's why it's purple, maybe it's linked to the Void. Then there is Pickaxe, which has some Nordic runes in it, so it could be Fradiordian. Then there is Blasting Wand, which is just a normal wand. A lot of these early items are really just normal items. Things will get a lot more interesting as we get to the mythic items. Anyway, then there is Stopwatch, which still has the same old icon, so it is from Piltover. Cloak of Agility could literally be from anywhere. Null Magic Mantle, however, could be from Demacia, because of the magic resistance. But again, it is just an ordinary cloak. Then there is Amplifying Tome, which even if we zoom in on it, we can't really read what is on it. Unfortunately, this could also be a tome from pretty much anywhere. Ruby Crystal is unfortunately also very generic, and the same goes for Sapphire Crystal. However, there is the possibility that both of them are from Freljord, and we'll get to why later in the video. Even though Longsword is very shiny and silvery, and it looks like it is from Demacia, these kinds of blades are literally everywhere. And the same goes for cloth armor, even though I could swear that I saw cloth armor somewhere in Legends of Runeterra, I just don't know in which card that was. Then there is dagger, same as the other items, but then there is fairy charm. And the first thing that got to my mind as I looked at this was this image. Somehow the ring that is teasing the first champion of 2021, which is theorized to be the ruined king, looks very similar to this item. And interestingly, Fairy Charm builds into two items from the Shadow Wilds, the Forbidden Idol and the Mystic Glass. Now, we shouldn't be looking at what items build into what. As you'll see in the other items, regions are really inconsistent in the progression. You can have a Demacian item which builds into a Noxian item. However, it is still curious to see that this item would build into two items from the Shadow Wilds, especially if they are supposed to be teasing the Ruined King. Anyway, then there is Rejuvenation Bead, which is most likely from Ionia. However, if you zoom in on the icon, you can notice that it shows us some kind of scenery in the reflection. It almost looks like Bilgewater, so this might also be from the Buhuru. Then there is Doran's Shield. Of course, all of us should know Doran by now, especially after our new video about Doran and the Titans. He is the legendary smith of Ionia. Then there is Skull, which I believe has a song from Pentakill about it, but I still have no idea where this could be from. The Twisted Metal makes me think that this could be Ishtali or Ionian, but it could also be just a simple Noxian weapon. Then there is Doran's Blade, which is another of Doran's masterful creations, and that is followed by Tear of the Goddess. Now normally I would say that we have no idea where this item is from, but it did appear in a cinematic, so we know it is from Shurima. It was Ezreal himself who tried to steal it. Then there is Doran's Ring, also a masterful creation, which is followed by Spell Thief's Edge. Now this is a Freljordian Dagger, because since this is a starting item you can check the other evolutions. The second version is called Frostfang, and the final version is called Shard of True Ice, so this is obviously a Freljordian weapon. 
And then there is my favorite starting item, Steel Shoulder Guards. Because these are also a support item, they also level up. The second version is called Rune Steel Spoulders, which, since this is obviously from Demacia, sounds strange. Demacians are trying to avoid magic at all cost, so it's interesting to see that this would be Rune Steel. Anyway, the final version is called Pauldrons of White Rock, and if you look at the icon, they look very similar to the pauldrons Garen has. So I wonder if this item is actually giving a name to Garen's armor. Because if that's the case, this is really awesome. Honestly, this could also be Tyena's shoulder guards. Or really, anyone from the Crown Guard family. Then there is Relic Shield, which looks like a random shield. And the second variation doesn't help. Except it is called Targon's Buckler. With the final version being Bulwark of the Mountain. And if you have a look at the Golden Cross, this is obviously connected to the Solari. Specifically, this could be from the Rakor tribe. Then there is Spectral Sickle, with the word Spectral telling us that this could be from the Shadow Isles, which is further confirmed by the other versions. The second one is called Harrowing Crescent, and the third version is Black Mist Scythe. However, based on the looks, maybe it is not an item from the Shadow Isles. Maybe this is a Bilgewaterian hook used against the undead during the Harrowing. Then there are two items which don't have an icon yet, Doran's Forge Hard and Doran's Hail Seed, both of which are obviously Ionian. And lastly, there is Dark Seal. And it is curious to see that it is still called Dark Seal. Because when it upgrades to Magile Soul Stealer, it is using the same logo which the Solari use. Which doesn't quite make sense. They aren't dark, nor would they steal souls. So maybe there is more to this item, we just don't know what's going on here. And more there is. I dug a little further into this item and I realized that the bronze carvings on the front are actually the Noxian crest representing vision, might and guile. This would also turn Magile Soul Stealer into a tome locked somewhere in the Immortal Bastion. So certainly the design of these items makes a lot more sense now. Then as we get to the epic items, we have Ages of the Legion, which if you look closer you can see the Demacian crest on it. So this is obviously a shield from the Demacian Legion. Then there is Last Whisper, which unfortunately is still using the old icon, nothing new here. Lost Chapter was just slightly updated, and you can now see the Shadow Isles logo on it a bit more clearly. Then there is Hex Drinker, which is still using the old icon as well, so it is outdated. But Quicksilver Sash also got a cool update. It is now showing how liquidy the Sash is, because it is supposed to be made out of Quicksilver. Which sounds crazy, but something like this could definitely be possible in Ishtal, where people can manipulate the raw elements. And then there is this item, Mage Epic Temporary. Obviously this was previously known as the Catalyst of Eons. And this is why I thought that the crystals could be from Freljord. Because the Catalyst did appear in Legends of Runeterra before, and there it was marked as a Freljordian item. So this is likely a Freljordian runestone. Then there is Wicked Hatchet, which is using an old icon from Twisted Treeline. So we'll have to wait for this one. But based on the name, it is likely going to be from the Shadow Isles. Just like Spectre's Cowl. There is no denying that. But then there is Void Crystal which later upgrades into Void Staff. This makes me think that this definitely comes from Ikathia. Ikathia is the only place where people seriously devoted themselves to the Void, and they started using the Void as a weapon. In fact, it was the Ikathians that were using staffs with flames to fight back the Void. That was before the staffs got corrupted. So as a fun fact, technically Jax is carrying around the last dying light of Ikathia. Anyway, then there is Zeal, which are two swords that look like they come from Shurima. And this is further underlined by Timet, an axe that is using a very similar art style that is clearly from Shurima. Then there is Spell Shroud, which unfortunately also has an old icon, but I wouldn't be surprised if this was a Demacian Shroud. Then there is Kama, which is one of those scythe weapons which ninjas used. And interestingly, Kama later upgrades into Whip Chain, which could be a reference to the fact that sometimes ninjas connected to Kamas with a chain. However, this is one of the items that has two versions, so we'll get to this when we have a look at the others. Either way, this is definitely coming from Ionia. Then there is Coalfield's Warhammer, which aesthetically looks like a Demacian weapon. Nothing more to add here. Then there is Phage, which unfortunately, despite it looking really cool, is just a random hammer. Despite the fact that the passive is called Rage, which could be hinting towards Noxus, unfortunately we have no idea where this could be from. Then there is Kodiachi, which is just a name for a real shinobi blade. So it definitely comes from Ionia. 
Then there is Serrated Dirk. I legitimately have no idea what either of those words mean. But it definitely looks Noxian. Especially because it upgrades into Sanguine Blade, which really seems to be referencing the Crimson Cult of Vladimir. Then there is Ancient Runestone, which looks like a random runestone, however its ability is called Visions of Ishtal, which reveals that not only is this item from Ishtal, but the wards which the item spawns should also be Ishtali. Later this can be upgraded into Ishtali Wardstone, and then there is Ishtali Wardstone upgrade. So as you can see it is not finalized yet. But hey, now we know where wards are from. Then there is another temporary item for mages. We have no idea what this is. Just like the on-hit knife. We literally have no idea. Recurve bow could be from absolutely anywhere unfortunately. However, then there is Warden's Mail. Now there are two possibilities for this item. The most well-known Wardens in Runeterra came from the Blessed Isles. On the Blessed Isles the Wardens made sure to protect the most powerful magical items in existence. Famously Thresh was one of these Wardens. However, after looking at the icon and then checking out what the passive is called, it becomes obvious that this is likely from Ishtal. Because we know that Rock Solid is Malphite's quote. And Malphite is a shard from a giant weaponized floating Ishtali city. Then there is Mystic Glass, which as we mentioned seems to be from the Shadow Isles. Then there is Bami Cinder. Bami is an unknown character. However, the Ishtali are pretty well known for being able to control the elements. Then there is Glacial Shroud, which is obviously a Freljordian shield. Fiendish Codex, however, is kind of unknown. We have no idea where this item could be from. It's probably just kind of a cursed book in a hidden library. But then there is Giant's Belt. Interestingly, throughout the entire lore of League of Legends, we only know about one kind of giants, and those were the old titans of Ionia. The stories very often call them giants, so I'm pretty sure this belt could come from one of those gargantuan monsters. Then there is Seeker's Arm Guard, which definitely looks Shreeman, which is underlined by the fact that it builds into Zonia's Hourglass, which also looks very Shreeman. Then there is Vampiric Scepter, which fits only into two places. Either Noxus with Vladimir's Cold, or the hidden crazy cultists of Demacia that worship demons. Then there is Negatron Cloak, which really should be a Demacian item, especially since it has a lot of magic resistance. Aether Wisp is obviously from the Shadow Isles, with Chain Vest also being from Demacia. We know this only because it appeared in Legends of Runeterra, and there it was marked as Demacian. Then there is Oblivion Orb. It is using an old icon, but it could be definitely turned into a Void item, because interestingly the passive is called Cursed, and as you'll see most of the Void items also have this passive. Also Malzahar calls the Void Oblivion. Then there is Bramble Vest. The origins of this item are still a mystery. It could be one of two things. Either this is Ishtali armor or it is Ionian armor. Both are places where they could shape wood into these kinds of forms. On top of which, ignore the cursed passive, it deals damage back. And especially in Ionia it is typical for nature to fight back. Then there is Kindle Gem, which aesthetically looks like an Ionian item. Then there is Eternal Drive, which based on the name it is definitely gonna be Piltoven, but the icon is very old. Then there is Executioner's Calling, which really looks like a Noxian Executioner's Blade, especially with those spikes and bolts in it. It really looks inspired by Zaun, which is exactly what Noxus does. Then there is the Forbidden Idol, which is some kind of Shadow Islesy monster trapped in a crystal. Then there is Sheen, which is obviously a true ice weapon, so it comes from Freljord. Kirchi's shard could be from absolutely anywhere. Unfortunately there is not really a place that would be famous for lightning, which is what this item does. Unless we count Volibear, but I doubt this is gonna be a Freljordian weapon. And then there is Crystalline Bracer, which again, just like the arm guard, looks very Shreeman. And the Crystalline term could be referencing the Brekern, who also come from Shreema. <sighs> And now we get to legendary items where things get really interesting. First of all, Rabidon's death cap, we have no idea where this is from. My guess is that this is some kind of lost artifact locked in the immortal bastion. Remember, Mordekaiser used to torment Vygar there, so I wouldn't be surprised if the death cap was connected to that. Bloodthirster unfortunately remains old. But then there is Cyrilda's grudge, with Cyrilda obviously being one of the three sisters of Freljord. So of course, this comes from Freljord. 
Then there is Runen's Hurricane, an item that suspiciously looks to be Ionian, because its passive is called Wind's Fury. And Ionia, besides Ishtal, is really the only place where they would utilize the wind as a weapon. Then there is Infinity Edge, which surprisingly wasn't really redesigned, it looks almost identical. Which leaves me confused, because I have no idea where this item could be from. The runes on it tell me that maybe this item comes from the Rune Wars. So it could be coming from anywhere between Demacia and Noxus. Then there is Navori Quickblade, with Navori referencing the province of Ionia. Then there is Titanic Hydra, which is still using its old icon. Based on looks alone, I assume that this is a Noxian weapon. Just like Black Cleaver. Black Cleaver is obviously Noxian because of the Black Steel. It's a material Noxians harvest between Freljord and the capital city. Then there is Gargoyle Stoneplate, which got a new icon. This item is obviously referencing Galio. So it was definitely created by Durand or it was inspired by Durand's work. As a reminder, don't forget that Durand and Doran were two different guys. Durand is a smith from Demacia and Doran is a smith from Ionia. Then there is Ravenous Hydra, which also looks to be Noxian. But then there is Lord Dominic's Regards, a Noxian repeater crossbow. I absolutely love this item because at first I wasn't really sure where this comes from. But this item also has a mythic version and that one reveals that this comes from Noxus. But we'll get to that better version later. Then there is Maw of Malmordius. We have no idea who the person is and because the icon is old we can't really tell where it's from. Just like Wit's End, it's the exact same thing. Death's Den surprisingly got the old icon, which has an eye on it, so this could still be a Darkin weapon. Then there is Blade of the Ruined King, which is using an older icon. At this point I should mention that the purple border around the icon likely means that it is old, so it looks like Riot will be updating this blade. Then there is Terak's Gauge, unfortunately we don't know who's Terak, and the item is so blurry I actually have no idea where it's from. My guess is Noxus. But then there is Archangel Staff, which surprisingly looks close to what Nami has. Which would mean that this is likely a Staff of the Marai, which is Nami's tribe of the Ocean Vastaya. If that's not the case, because you have little stars around it, this would have to come from Targon. Then there is Rhyalize Crystal Scepter, which is obviously a Freljordian Staff with true ice. But then we have Jinsu's Rageblade, an item that was always theorized to come from Ionia. However, now we really have no idea where it's from. Interestingly though, the two passives reveal something about Jinsu. It's called Jinsu's Exile and Jinsu's Chaos. So no matter who Jinsu was, this item reveals that he was exiled from somewhere. And then he likely went mad. Or that he was exiled for fighting order. Then we have a new icon for Yomu's Ghost Blade. Here the ability says Wraith Step and Roaming Blade. So again, whoever Yomu was, that guy probably traveled a lot. Then we have the Sanguine Blade, which we already mentioned. This is very likely referencing Vladimir's Crimson Cold. And then we have Apex Scope. Based on the icon, this is a Piltoven invention, but it might still change. Then there is Velocity Orb, which also seems to be Piltoven invention, but that's about it. Then there is Demonic Embrace, which normally we wouldn't be sure where it's from, but it is using an old Ionian icon. And its passive is called Azakana's Gaze, referencing the Ionian demons called the Azakana. So this of course is from Ionia. Then there is Tyrant, an item that not only does visually reference Shrima, but in Shrima the emperors were always seen as tyrants. They always enslaved people. That's why from the storytelling perspective this item is really cool. Then there is Deathblade, which has two different versions as you'll see later. But because the icon is old, we have no idea where this could be from. Then there is Warmog's armor. Normally I would think that this is Ishtali armor, but it was confirmed by a rider that this armor was actually crafted by the Yordles. Then we have Lichbane, a sword that was teased to belong to a mage. And there are a lot of mages in Runeterra, so this could literally come from anywhere, unfortunately. However, Nasher's tooth is a bit more obvious. Even the passive is called Ikathian Bite, with Ikathia once again being the region that embraced the Void as a weapon. I even love how the blade has three little eyes on it, because those three eyes are referencing Malzahar's Voidlings. Then we have Phantom Dancer, still using the old icon. Not much to say here, even the passive is called Spectral Waltz, so this one comes from the Shadow Isles. Just like Spirit Visage, 
The interesting thing about this one is that if you look above it, you can see the runes from the Blessed Isles. And the passive is called Indomitable Will, which is likely referencing fighting back the Black Mist. Then there is Mercurial Scimitar, just like it was with the Quicksilver Sash. This item is likely made of liquidy metal, so it likely comes from Ishtal. Essence Reaver is also using an old icon, however it is likely going to be from the Shadow Isles as well. Then we have Dead Man's Plate, which is cool because it is actually showing us one of Gangplank's shoulder pads. That's why it is called Dead Man's Plate. Ever since Misfortune took over Bilgewater, to everyone Gangplank became a dead man. Edge of Night is curious because this cloak looks exactly like the cloak Talon has. So it is like Linoxian. Force of Nature is also using an old icon. However, because the passive is called Rhythm of Ionia, it is obviously going to be Ionian. Then there is Mana Moon, an item of weirdly shaped medals. I really have no idea where this one could be from. The Marcians are usually known for crafting these shapes, but I don't think a magical item would fit that place. And especially after it upgrades into Muramana, it really doesn't fit Demacia. I am more leaning towards Ishtal or Targon. And I forgot to say that Archangel's Staff actually upgrades into Seraph's Embrace, which here still has an old icon, but there is a newer one in the files. And it still could be some kind of a Mirai Staff, although here it looks more Targonian. Then there is Guardian Angel, which unfortunately also has an old icon, so we really have no idea where this is from. But then there is Umber Glaive, which really hints towards space and Targon with everything it has. Be it the name, the passive Blackout, or even the space in the icon. Then there is Serpent Chris, a totally random item that is definitely incomplete. Then we have Mortal Reminder, which looks like some kind of a hybrid between Noxus and Zone. Maybe that's exactly what this is supposed to be. Noxians are using a lot of experimental Zonite technology. Then we have Abyssal Mask, which with its name is hinting towards the Void. Randuin's Omen is still using the Demacian Crest, so Randuin still has to be some kind of Demacian. Frozen Heart obviously comes from Freljord, and it is likely a shard of true ice. Stormraiser is likely coming from Ionia, there is nothing more to say about that. Then we have Sawtooth Shredder, which looks like one of the claw weapons which the Noxian Berserks use. Other than that I have no idea where this could be from. Rapid Fire Cannon comes from Bilgewater, and it still has the old icon. Thornmail, however, was upgraded to a pure Noxian armor. It looks really cool. Morello Nomicon just shifted from blue to green. The greeny magic of Death Grasp was linked to the Shadow Isles, so I'm gonna assume that's where Morello Nomicon comes from as well. This is where we could also assign Banshee's Veil, with its name at least. And also with its passive, which is called Black Morning which is likely referencing the Black Mist. Zeke's Convergence is still using the old icon, but I wonder if the Convergence is referencing the new Echoes game. I wonder if we will meet Zeke's there. Eclipse is an item that is using one of Leona's Eclipse icons, so this one will definitely be linked to Targon. Redemption is looking like a Demacian item, especially with the wings which are linked to Kale and Morgana. But because it is magical, it could actually come from the ancient times of Demacia. Maybe this comes from the civilization Kale built. Mikael's Crucible, unfortunately, is very old, and so nothing new there. And the funny thing now is that I never realized what Ardent Sensor was. I never really thought about the name, but now that we have a new icon, I finally realized what this item is supposed to be. It's one of the things that priests use to spread mist around, to bless you or something. However, this one is likely coming from the Shadow Isles. Then we have King's Vow, which looks very Demacian, but the design doesn't really fit that region. We don't have many other kingdoms in Runeterra that would fit this item, so perhaps this might come from the old kingdom of the Ruined King. Then we have Staff of Flowing Water, which is either Marai or Ionian. Which takes us to the mythic items. First we have Leandris Anguish, which is using an old icon, but it is definitely gonna be from the Shadow Isles. Ludens Tempest could be from absolutely anywhere, but the name Tempest once again hinting Wind and Ionia. Cold Staff is hinting towards Freljord, but to be honest it can get cold anywhere. Gale Force could also come from anywhere, however its ability is called Zephyr Strike, with the Zephyr Sage being in Ionia, so this is likely a legendary Ionian bow. Then we have the Kraken Slayer, a giant harpoon cannon designed to slay krakens from Bilgewater. 
And now, if you remember Lord Dominic's regards, this is the upgraded version. The Immortal Shield Bow. Previously, this was called the Crimson Shield Bow, which was likely referencing Vladimir's Crimson Colt. However, with the change of its abilities, it was renamed to the Immortal Shield Bow, in reference to the Immortal Bastion from Noxus. Trinity Force, unfortunately, is still using the old icon, despite the new one already being revealed. It is likely going to be from Ionia. Gore Drinker is some kind of masochistic Noxian blade. It is Noxian because on the left side it has the classic Noxian design. And I assume this is some kind of weapon Mordekaiser hit in the Immortal Bastion. Then there is Famine, which could be absolutely anything. No idea what this is. Sunborn Aegis is replacing Sunfire Cape. Either way, it is definitely Shuriman. Hextech Proto Belt 01 is Piltoven. Then there is Rod of Eternity, which, I will say it now, was renamed to Aksamuk's Folly, with Aksamuk, of course, being Aksamuk Varchoi Koari Ikathor, a soldier of Ikathia who fought besides Jax against the Ascendant of Shurima. So it is awesome to see Riot referencing that. Then there is Night Harvester, which is likely going to be one of the Lunari Scythes. Frostfire Gauntlet could be from anywhere where there's magic, but Freljord would be the most appropriate. But then there is Catastrophe Exosuit, a Piltoven armor of Professor Von Yip, who's also known in the world of Legends of Runeterra as Catastrophe. Duskblick of Darkthar is still the same. Unfortunately, we are not sure where that's from. But since its ability is called Dusk, it might be Lunari. Then there is Galaxy Chopper, which also has a second version, but we'll get to that in a second. It is definitely Lunari, that's all I'm gonna say for now. Then there is Cold Steel Psy, which definitely comes from Zed's Shadow Order, because not only is it a fist weapon, just like what Zed has, but it also has an active ability called From the Shadows, which is one of Zed's quotes. Then we have Shuralia's Battle Song, with Shuralia likely being an Ascended Shreeman, with this being her crown. Then there is Locket of the Iron Solari, which remained exactly the same, so this still comes from the Solari. And then there is Pendant of Vitality, which was also renamed, but we'll get to that in a second. Lastly, let me quickly mention that the Elixirs remain the same, with the Elixir of Iron being from Freljord and Elixir of Wrath being Noxian, but Boots got changed. Berserker's Graves come from Noxus. Boots of Swiftness have absolutely the best reference to Nunu's mum. I am pretty sure this comes from Nunu's tribe. Mobility Boots are likely a Zonite Augment, Mercury Threads are likely Demacian, because of the Demacian icon on it, Ionian Boots of Lucidity are Ionian, and Plated Steel Caps also come from Noxus. These are all the items in the shop right now. However, as I mentioned, they all have their second version. So let's dive into all the extras that are in the files. Once again, here we are getting into the items that are found in the tutorial for some reason. There, the items are slightly different. But because the majority of them are incomplete, I will go through them a lot faster. All the basic and epic items are still the same. But in the legendary section, there are some differences. For example, the scope has a different name here. Here, it is called Horizon Focus. And when it comes to the claws, which I had no idea where they could be from, well, here the item is called Kempang Chain, which would definitely make the item come from Zone. But then there is an entire new item that is using a placeholder icon. That one is Chemtech Fumigator, which would also definitely come from Zone, since this one is referencing the pollution which Zone emits. Also here, the Chris, or whatever the item was called, was renamed to Serpent's Fang, which is a way better name. Then, remember the Tyrant? The Shuriman Blade with an awesome reference to the Emperor? Well, here, in this version, it is called Silver Weave Leg Plates. Which, you know, it makes sense that the Leg Plates would remove crown control. But I really hope they stick to the Tyrant. Also here, the Death Blade is called the Collector. And it might actually be a totally different item. I wasn't really paying attention to the stats. But the Collector is getting gold from kills. I don't think the Death Blade did that. That is it for the legendary items. Now let's have a quick look at the differences between the mythic items. As I already mentioned, the Rod of Eternity is called Aksamuk's Folly here, which is way better because it references actual lore. Then there is the Berserker Suit. Once again, I wasn't paying attention to the stats, so I need to check if this is just a different name or if this is a separate item. But I do believe that this is an older version of the Catastrophe item. This Berserker already has boots, so I hope they stick to the cats. Then there is Divine Devourer, 
which definitely sounds like an item that should be from Ionia. And then there is Eclipse, which was previously called Galaxy Cutter. That's why the item had the Moonstrike passive. It is related to the Lunari after all. And I have to say, the name Eclipse fits this item better. Then there is also the Hextech Rocket Belt. This name would be way easier to remember than the O1 prototype, or whatever the other item was. I would actually prefer this name. And here you can see that the awesome weapon of the Shadow Order was previously called Prowler's Claw, which is quite a boring name, and it really doesn't fit the Shadow Order. And then there is Stride Breaker, which I do believe is the chained weapon thingy. Here it has a way better name. And that is it not only for the items, but also for this video. This was a super early look at all the new items. I will try to contact Riot and get some actual info on these items. I mean, not stat-wise, but rather when it comes to the lore and the design. I really like how all the items now feel like they belong in the universe. This is a really awesome step forward when it comes to the world building. But now, let me leave you with some of the icons that were data mined. First of all, Total Biscuit has a new icon. Also, there are some new blades that were unused. But most importantly, look at these placeholders. I really wanna know what this item was supposed to be.